there are certain different ways that you can tie your necktie and uh, you know that you can do the knot of your tie and each and one of, each and every one of them communicates something different this is something that has to do with one of my products image in business the semiotics of clothing authoritative codes accessible co accessibility codes and identification codes right now most people most men only know one knot maybe two at the most right but you have to understand that you can mix them to use the one that you need to use for a specific uh, in a specific moment, right? So let's say that you're going to a business meeting where there's a lot of rich people, you know, there's a lot of authority people. What you have to do, of course, is show off a lot of authority codes. Well, what do you do? How do you position your tie? It's always going to be in between the first, between the first button and the second button that shows in your shirt, but of course is tucked in. After you tucked it in, the first button or the second button, this is where the thinner part of your of your tie needs to be hanging, right? You see, this part is it's more uh, it's longer than this one. Okay. That being said, I'm going to show you the Windsor, the full Windsor. This is one of the most powerful neckties uh, or knots that you can do with your tie. Everyone thinks that oh, you know, it's the most powerful shit. Yes, but don't overuse it, right? Don't overuse it. And also apply everything that you've been learning, okay? So if you have, for example, you wanna use the Windsor, the full Windsor, but you have proportions in your face that maybe it will not make it better, you know, it will not uh, benefit, it will not be beneficial for your face, then don't use it, all right? You can use another one. For example, the half Windsor. Remember, because this, the full Windsor will make your face wider. So have that in mind. Let's start. Put, I don't know if you can see it, maybe you put one, the shorter part you put it underneath, the longer part, and then you have to put it underneath, like this. And then you can see it, you grab this part and you put it underneath. I'm gonna show you about six or five, I don't know. So you have it like that, right? Boom. You always have to keep this thumb here so that it doesn't move, because this is actually how you start creating the knot, right? So then, it's between this finger, and this finger, the, the point finger and the thumb. These are going to be your, your tools. Then you pass it again underneath, but under with your thumb here, with your thumb, you pass it underneath. So you see what I did? Okay, we have it like this, and then you pass it underneath. And what you do, you create the windsor. You put it inside again. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's already Form. The Windsor is already here. Look, the Windsor is already here. All right. This is the like the shape of it. You already have it. So that's why you need to be really careful with your thumb, your your point finger. You need to keep it together over here because what you have to do right now, you just have to cover it. All right. Cover it. I don't know if you can see it, and then you put it underneath. You pass it underneath. Again, you put it underneath. Here's your thumb and boom voila there you go all right so all you have to do is you put it you place it i mean probably you already know about this shit right <clears throat> but you pass it underneath uh no you pass it through this little loophole you just have to be careful you you use your thumb to your thumb to push it upwards while with the other hand you're pulling it downwards so that's how you do it, and then this is the wings. Practice makes a master, okay? So you have to practice it again, again, and again until you have actually do it. Because otherwise, sometimes the, the this the length of your tie is super short because you didn't do it correctly. This this is a very common mistake. The full wings. Boom! This is one of the most powerful knots that you can do. Use it when you want to be extra authoritative. And of course, I always recommend that you that you leave this uh, like this little wrinkle over here because that is a subliminal communication. You're sending a message that your tie is quality, is made out of silk, so that's why it gets a little bit wrinkle and it communicates power. All right, so let's go move on to the next one, the half winter. The half winter is really simple. You do the same goddamn thing. You pass it underneath, you know, 
the longer part and the, the shorter part, and then you do this at the, the like like the full Windsor. But instead of you know you do it over here, right? On the full Windsor, what you do is you put it again over here. And that's what, what creates the Windsor, right? On the half Windsor, you only put it once here. You know, you only do it once, and then you just you cover it. Right? That is the half Windsor. That's why it's called the half Windsor. It only has one part in it. And maybe it's a little bit more accessible, but still it's an authoritative time. Alright, boom, there you go. The half Windsor, there you have it. Half Windsor. This is the half Windsor. Now I'm gonna show you the simple knot. This is the knot that every man should know. This is an accessible code, you know, an accessible tie, tie knot. And it's like when you wanna be more casual, but of course you're dressed up, you have your fucking tie, so you look cool, you look good. You look put together, but you want to be a little bit more accessible. So what you do, the length is the same, right? Between the first one and the second one. You just put it underneath like this. There you go. That's it. The shorter part goes underneath the longer part. Boom. There you go. All right, just like this. Remember that your tools are your thumb and your finger, and then you just pass it on underneath. And there you go. That's the simple knot, all right? The only thing left to do is you always leave this loop loophole over here, like a little hole, so that you can pass the rest of your tie. That is the simple knot. I, I, personally, I like it because, you know, it's not too... Uh, you know, with the Windsor, it just, it's, it's like you're always showing off. With the Windsor or the half Windsor, it's like people trying to show off, like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a per powerful man. And, Stuff like that, right? So that's that's why I don't like. Mm -hmm. However, there are some times where I use it, where I have to use it, simply because I need to communicate more power. But this is the simple knot. Simple knot. Boom! I love it. One more, because there's a lot, a lot that I can show you. There's the thin, thin uh, tie knot. There's the Trinity, the blah blah blah, but I just showed you the full Windsor, the half Windsor, the simple knot, and I'm gonna show you the Prince Albert, which is my favorite. I always use the Prince Albert. Now, the Prince Albert, you can use it on very thick ties because the Prince Albert is like the most fashionable, right? When you see someone using the Prince Albert, you know that that person knows about fashion, knows, knows what he's doing, and not only that, it has money to spend on good quality silk, pure sweet silk ties. So I'm gonna do it. It is the same as a simple knot, but you just do it twice, all right? You put it like this, and then you leave your fingers over here to create the hole, and then you do it again, all right? You do it twice, there you go, that's it. Very simple, let me do it again. Very simple, this is the Prince Albert. And maybe on the Prince Albert you leave a little bit, you leave it a little bit shorter. Right, because you're doing it twice, depending on the length of your tie. Which, by the way, there are uh, measures, me measurements for your ties. Someone that is very tall, he needs to buy longer ties. Someone that is a little bit short, like I am, you know, he, we need to buy more average, uh, shorter ties. All right. So you normally you use it like this, right? When you do the Prince Albert, maybe you do a little bit short. And then what you do? There you go. One. There you go. One. And now. Two and I need to watch myself in the goddamn mirror. You put it over here underneath, you know, and then you pass it through the hole, and that's it. You need to be very careful when you do it, so that it, it, it it's you maintain the knot. Okay, don't worry about it. You need to to take your time, be patient, all right? So boom, boom, boom. You grab it from both ends and you push it up, upwards. That's a very good tip. Every time you're doing your knot, your, your tie knot, you always push it downwards, but on this, at the same time, you use your fingers, your point fingers, and you push it upwards, all right? There you go. This is the Prince Albert, my friends. This is the most fashionable tie knot that you can possibly wear. Uh, you can see the, the two parts over here, you know, like one is showing. Some people, some very fashionable people in Italy, they actually show both ends. Now, normal advice is that you need to hide the shorter part 
but you know, when you are really in fashion, for example, Piti Wombo, which is the biggest gathering of men's fashion, which happens in Italy, in Florence, Piti Wombo, it's beautiful, man. I've been there, you see a lot of fashionable people, you know, and so they use it like this. But very few people know how to rock the Prince Albert, and now when you see it, the one who knows will know. I'm like, oh man, that motherfucker is fashionable, he knows what he's doing. That means that he's he has invested in himself, he knows about fashion, right? It's a good communication, uh, number of communication. Uh, there's more, there's more that you can learn right now, but use them depending on what you what you need, right? If you're meeting with a fucking president, I'm not gonna fucking use the the simple knot, I'm not gonna use the Prince Albert knot, I'm gonna use the Windsor or the half Windsor, you know, because I need to match the frequency of the powerful people that I'm gonna meet, right? So don't use it just because it looks good or fashionable. You need to connect the dots and think, all right, if the proportions of your head, you know, you need to think on, in terms of proportion, of course, aesthetics, but also what are you going to communicate? Then remember, it's all about the little details, right? So choose it carefully. Let me see if I can remember the simple knot. The simple knot, I think, is different. You twist it a little bit. Yeah, I think the simple knot, you twist it, this part, and then let me see. You you do it backwards. You play you twist the longer part and you put you place the shorter end on the hook here and then you just simply do the same thing as the simple knot. And that is the, the thin knot. It's super thin. This is a knot that uh, in back in the 60s a lot of men use it. You Not know, like madmen and shit like that. With with the super slim ties. It's, it's uh, even thinner than the simple knot. This is called the thin knot. By the way, you need to place one finger, a finger needs to fit here in, in your shirt, under your shirt. That means that it actually fits you. If you cannot put one finger, it's because it's too tight. If you, if you can, if it's too loose, you can place two fingers. You can see right now, I cannot place two fingers. I can only place one. So that's why this is my me measurement. Remember, it's all about fit. But do you see it? It's super, super thin, it's super small. There you go, I just showed you a bunch of different tie knots. Become the best version of yourself. Keep sending me your questions. I'll see you in the next one.